Book Two, Chapter Eleven. The mayor had his eye on the west side, where countless kids and victims rode their bikes out to score, and found the undercover. Hey, lover, they knew what you desired and where to find you on the coldest nights and the hottest days, with your rims scraping the ground and the slow revolution of the wheels, the pedals, your feet, the chain links. The earth. Your revolution on the streets came to a standstill when you reached the asphalt field and narrowed your eyes and scanned the blue and red flanks, flashing their own chrome revolution, and cuffing your hands and ending yours. Being behind bars was the cure for some, the turning point to straighten out. Appeared to be the cure for Cass. For other folks, they were just bars, and when the bars were gone, they'd be free to live the way they lived once again, and rejoice in the return. For her, it was religious. She woke him one night with a phone call, spoke deeply of having been busted buying drugs and put in the back of the paddy wagon with the other addicts and drunks and taken to jail. God believed to be very close and paid for when you have the cash, and then felt God felt so eye-opening and internalized that you are Jesus and God loves you, and because you are His son and you are Him, but younger, hammering nails into wood and human with day-old bread in your hands that you break and share with your great friends and disciples and partners in crime. The white melting into you, into your teeth, like you had not drank coffee to the grinds, drained black to the dregs. These were words Cass had written and recited to him. Oh Jesus, she had found Jesus. She was going to church again. She had gone from drug addict to Jesus freak overnight. Evidently, he considered that a good. And bad sign. She went to church when she really needed help with her life, but it was good she knew she needed help. It was a question of hope. Had she any hope?